Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. On the court is now in session. Today, the chamber will continue to hear the testimony of uh, the witness Sao Hien. And Ms. Sekolbuti, could you report the attendance of Madame the Sekolbuti, parties and individuals to today's proceedings? Sekolbuti, uh, Mr. President, Madame for Sekolbuti. today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. As for Noon Chi, he is present in the holding cell downstairs. As he requests to be present in the courtroom, his waiver has been delivered to the greffier. The witness who is to testify today, that is Mr. Sarhien, is present in the courtroom. And the reserve witness is through TCW944 confirms that through his best knowledge he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, Nunti or Kirsten Porn, nor to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. This witness will take an oath before the Iron Statute at 10 o'clock this morning before his testimony. He has a, a duty, he has a, a and assisting counsel Lodge Perry with him. Qui est avec lui. President, thank you, Ms. Sekolbuti. The chamber Le now decides on the request by Noon Chir. The chamber has received a waiver from Noon Chir dated 18th February 2015. He uh, confirms that due to his poor health conditions, that he is back pain and that he cannot sit for long. And in order to effectively participate in the future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate participate in and be present at the 18th February 2015 hearing. He has been informed by his counsel about the consequence of this waiver that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report by the UT doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 18 February 2015, the doctor notes that the health condition of Noon Chi is that he has a backache when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 81.5 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nunji's request to follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs via an audiovisual means, and that applies for today's proceedings. And as Nunji waves his direct presence in the courtroom, every unit you incited to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nunji can follow it. The chamber now gives the floor La to the co-prosecutors to report the questions through this witness. Do you have the floor? Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honors, and everyone Monsieur in and around the courtroom. Bonjour, and good morning to you Bonjour, also, Mr. Sao Hien. At the end of the session yesterday, we were discussing your brother's arrest. Can you tell us how long after the fall of Phnom Penh your brother arrived in your village?
It was a few days after the fall of Phnom Penh he arrived. Then the village chief and his uh, group uh, came to invite him for re-education. So uh, how long was it after he arrived in your village Donc, that he was arrested? Après, combien de temps après son arrivée dans le village s'est-il écoulé avant qu'il ne soit arrêté I didn't know when he was arrested. Je ne sais pas I think quand il three a été days after he was taken away for re-education. That's what was told to his wife and his family. And can you tell us how you learned about his arrest? Did you learn from his wife and his family, or did you witness it personally? When the village chief and the group chief came to arrest him, my uh, family members were there, uh, including my mother and the wife and the family of my brother. And you mentioned yesterday that he was arrested by a militiaman. Uh, from whom did you learn that he had been arrested by that militiaman? I learned of uh, that information uh, why, why my uh, sister-in-law. In answer 46 of your interview, Question. you say the following, quote, I knew that there was a killing site at Krang Tai Chan. My older brother, Lun Hom, was arrested Mon and taken to Krang Tai Chan, end quote. Can you tell us how you know your brother was taken to Krang Tai Chan? He was ta taken away uh, in a horse cart. They did not tie him up. And only later on, uh, I learned from uh, the neighbors that he was taken and killed at Krang Tachan. And when did you learn that? It was during the daytime. C'était pendant la journée. I uh, can recall the date that I heard of that information as we didn't know which day of the week it was. Our uh, main focus was to work in the rice field. In answer 35 of your OCIJ question. interview, you described your brother as a Lon Nol soldier. Can you tell us what rank he had and where he had served? He was a former Lonol soldier, and I did not meet him then until the time that he was arrested and taken away, and I personally did not know which rank he held. I'd like to ask you about three other people from your area. Their names are Nguyen Chen, Bet Chan, and Buk Narun. Did you know any of these people? And if so, can you tell us what happened to them during the Khmer Rouge period? I am not familiar with the three names that you just mentioned. Okay, thank you. 
I'd like to ask you about another arrest now. In answer 41 of your OCIJ interview, you said the following, quote, one night I saw them call a person away with them, but I do not remember the name. That person was sent to carry leaves on shoulder poles, but never reappeared. The militia chairman used his subordinates in the militia to call that person away. Siem was the militia chairman. Whether he is dead or alive is unknown. Many others disappeared besides that one, but I do not remember their names." End quote. Can you tell us more about the militia chairman Siem, who he was, and what his involvement was in arrests. Siem was the militia uh, chairman in Tramco district. He usually deployed his uh, subordinates in the militia uh, to, to go and get uh, any person that he needed. Mr. President, with the chamber's leave, I would now like to show the witness document E3-2437, ERN 0036-6707 in English, 0027-1003 in Khmer, and 0062-3848 in French. This is a document signed by a person named Siem, dated 29 April 1977 at Tram and addressed to the Chief of Education, Office of District 105. President and uh, Council, you may proceed. Oh, oui, bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Je remercie. Le Président. Good morning, Mr. Um, President. Je Thank you for allowing uh, me to speak. Avant que l'on montre le document témoin, Prior to uh, the witness Monsieur the document, le Procureur nous indique en quoi uh, uh, ce document est relié à un témoin particulier. Uh, J'ai bien compris qu'il y a un nom qui apparaît, mais il faudrait qu'il nous précise pourquoi il est utile de montrer le document au témoin sans que le témoin ait indiqué qu'il en avait connaissance auparavant to the witness when he has already stated that he had no prior knowledge of the subject matter. President and uh, the President. international co-prosecutor, could you uh, enlighten the chamber on the re relevancy of that document to this uh, witness uh, testimony? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, this is a document that is signed by the person that we believe the witness has just spoken about, that is the militia chairman, Siem. Uh, it relates to another arrest. The witness in his OCIJ statement said, Many others disappeared besides that one, but I do not remember their names. In this context, this is a document that the witness clearly may be able to help us contextualize if he's allowed to look at it. President, yes, uh, in that case, you uh, can proceed. And could I also ask that the document be uh, broadcast, please? Accusation. Mr. Sauhian, I'll give you a moment to look at this document. As I mentioned, it's signed by a person named Siem. It's dated 29 April 1977 at Tram Kok. And I'm just going to read a short portion of the document. It says, quote, Comrade Chief of Education Office of District 105, for your information, as the following. Du bureau de réduction du district I would like to send Amrut Mart and report about his activities 
to Comrade as follows. End quote. The document then goes on to say that he was a soldier with the rank of sergeant and describes him criticizing Ankar. Now, my question is, did you know this person, Amrit Mat? And do you know anything about his arrest? I do not know this person. Okay, thank you for that. I'd now like to turn to the topic of cooperatives. In answer 24 of your OCIJ interview, you were asked whether you remember when private property rights were eliminated. And this is what you said. Quote, after Phnom Penh fell in 1975, all property, such as livestock, paddy fields, and houses were placed under collective ownership. The people reacted to property being placed under collective ownership, but they did not dare say anything for fear that they would be taken away and killed." End quote. Can you tell us a little bit more about this process of property being placed under collective ownership? How did it happen and who caused it to happen? That happened in 1976. The village chief convened a meeting and all the villagers had to attend that meeting. He announced that all private properties had to be gathered and placed under collective ownership including uh, kettles, cooking uh, utilities, etc. So from that day onwards, the private ownership was abolished. And can you tell us the name of that village chief, if you remember it? The first uh, village chief was Tum. Second person uh, in the village was uh, Aja Nien, and the third person within the village committee was uh, Ta However, they all died. You said that people reacted to property being placed under collective ownership but that they did not dare say anything for fear they would be taken away and killed. Can you tell us who the people feared would take them away and kill them? The people fear the most uh, what the people feel the most was the village chief and his uh, militia. Village, ainsi que sa milice. C'était eux qu'ils redoutaient le plus. Answer 25 of your OCIJ interview indicates that after 17 April 1975, you were assigned to work in the rice fields. Who was it that assigned you to work there? Qui vous a demandé de travailler dans les rizières? When I was assigned to work in the rice fields, it was assigned by the uh, unit chiefs. The unit chief would assign us to work in designated uh, locations or areas. And do you recall the name of that unit chief? Question, vous souvenez-vous du nom de ce chef d'unité? It was uh, Tamom, he was in charge Tamom, of a, a unit. Qui était responsable de unité. In answer 27 of your OCIJ Question. interview, Dans la réponse numéro 27 you said, quote, they had us put up checkerboard straight paddy dikes. 
either single or twin, and we dug both large and small feeder canals." End quote. Can you tell us what specific work you were required to do? Were you digging? Were you carrying dirt, lifting things? What were your actual physical tasks? I was assigned to uh, build uh, dikes or to plow the rice fields or to plant vegetables or to engage in dry season farming. I engage in all sorts of uh, work in the field. What hours were you required to work? Uh, for uh, agricultural work, it uh, started from 4 o'clock in the morning and it uh, concluded about 12 or 1 o'clock in the uh, in, by noon. Usually, uh, when it was time to conclude the work, a uh, bell was rang, and that's when we knew that it was uh, the noon time that we had to uh, conclude the assigned quota. And what would you then do in the afternoon? Question, et que faisiez-vous l'après-midi? During the uh, transplanting season, I tended the cows and make sure that uh, they fed, they were fed properly. And uh, at night time, after we had our meal, then we had to pull the uh, rice seedlings. So what time would your work conclude for the day? Usually uh, a day's work ended around 7 or 8 p.m. En général, la journée de travail se terminait à 7 ou 8 heures. Were there ever occasions when you were required to work past 7 or 8 p.m.? Question, y avait-il des jours où on vous demandait de travailler au-delà de 7 heures ou 8 heures? No. Réponse, non. During the time you were working in the rice fields, were you free to leave your work unit if you wished to? Pouviez-vous librement quitter le lieu de travail, si vous le souhaitiez? No, absolutely not. Réponse, absolument pas. And why not? What would have happened Question, to you or what did you believe would have happened to you? Que pensez-vous qu'il vous, qu vous serait arrivé si vous aviez quitté le lieu de travail? Since the time that I lived under uh, the three years, eight months, uh, 20 days period, réponse, I never asked for a permission période, to, to go anywhere. I uh, usually uh, would just finish the soit. work that I en was général, assigned to do. And why didn't you ever ask for permission to go anywhere? Question, <coughs> Because I was really very afraid, Parce very afraid of the unit chief. I never dared to speak to him. And usually I try my best to uh, complete the Je work quotas as soon as possible. And usually it was the uh, unit chief who général, spoke to me when he assigned me uh, to work uh, at a specific location. And why were you afraid of your unit chief? I was very, very afraid of him because I saw people uh, taken away. So for one full day of work, usually I never uh, spoke a word to my unit chief. And I spoke only a very few words to uh, people who were uh, working with me or uh, close to me.
je ne parlais que très peu aux personnes qui travaillaient près de And moi. when you saw people taken away, did you know why they had been taken away? Et lorsque vous avez vu que des personnes étaient emmenées, saviez-vous pourquoi elles avaient été emmenées? I did not réponse. know uh, the reason for them being taken away. Je ne connaissais pas uh, les motifs. They were taken away and uh, simply disappeared. Elles avaient tout simplement été emmenées, elles avaient disparu. I think you mentioned a little bit earlier something about quotas. Were workers in your unit punished if they failed to reach their quotas? Si ils n'atteignaient pas leur quota de travail, ou ils ne remplissaient pas leur quota de travail. President, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, please wait, and uh, Council Kungsum On, you have the floor. Kungsum On, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, object uh, to this question raised by the co-prosecutor. He uh, made an unclear L'accusation question, and it was a kind of clair. hypothetical question. And that uh, what uh, would happen? Uh, would there be a punishment if uh, the uh, the production was not uh, rich? Si so it was a hypothetical kind of a question, and I object to it. Your Honor, I, I don't feel that that was a hypothetical question. Uh, I'm asking him about concrete cases in which workers failed to reach their quotas, and what then happened à l'occasion desquels les travailleurs n'ont pas atteint leur quota et que se passait-il alors The objection is overruled, and Mr. Witness, please respond to the last question posed to you by the international co-prosecutor, if you can recall it. Perhaps I should repeat my question, Mr. President. Sir, can you tell us what happened to workers in your unit who failed to reach their quotas? s'ils ne remplissaient pas leur quota. Answer. The quota Réponse. assigned by Anka uh, to produce uh, farming, for example, one hectare of land to produce exemple, three ton of pour, rice uh, per hectare. Un hectare de terre, il And during the harvesting uh, season, riz. I don't know whether they measure or they do the uh, weighing of uh, the produce. Si la production était so there was no punishment happened in my unit. Dans mon unité, il n'y a pas eu de punition. You just mentioned uh, the number of three tons per hectare, and in answer 30 of your OCIJ interview, you say you attended meetings where you were told to strive to get three to four tons per hectare. As a, as a lifelong rice farmer, did you feel that that was a reasonable or realistic production goal based on conditions in your area? réaliste en fonction des conditions qui prévalaient là où vous étiez Le the président, uh, please wait, uh, Mr. Witness, Mr. Copé, you may proceed. 
Maître Copa. Uh, Mr. Uh, President, Monsieur good morning. This is a question that goes bonjour. far beyond the capabilities of this witness. Ce um, on être there is, I can guarantee you, tons of literature about uh, how, what, is, what is reasonable, what can you expect uh, of how many tons per hectare. Les uh, it depends on all kinds of biological circumstances. Ça de um, right now we're having 16 tons per hectare, if I understand correctly. So there's much more to it than just asking a farmer as to what the realistic goals are of three tons per hectare. So it's an expert question, not a question for this witness. Si un objectif de trois tonnes par hectare est réaliste, ce serait un expert et non pas ce témoin de répondre à cette question. The President, Judge Fence, uh, you uh, may take the floor to respond to the objection by the Defense Counsels to the last question put by the Co-Prosecutor. You may proceed. Uh, for, for the reasons mentioned by the Defense, obviously the Chamber wouldn't uh, base any factual findings exclusively on the answer, whatever it will be, of this witness. But that doesn't mean that the witness is not in a position to answer the question and the Chamber wants to hear the answer. So I'll, I'll just repeat the question for you, um, Mr. Sauhin. As someone who had been farming rice in the period before 1975, did you think that the goal of three to four tons per hectare was an achievable goal, was a possible goal? Answer, as far as I know, I am uh, a farmer. Uh, we could not produce uh, that um, three or four hectare, uh, uh, three, four ton per hectare. We could not achieve that. I'd now like to ask you a few questions about the food you received while you were working in the cooperatives. And can you tell us first, where did you go for your meals? Premièrement, où alliez-vous prendre les repas? When 
réponse. I uh, need the meals. Uh, we would uh, uh, tell, we would be told to go to the uh, kitchen and we get a repas, uh, plate cuisine, of rice and a, a large bowl of soup for 10 people around the table. And Donc how many other people ate their questions. meals in this place where you ate? Là où vous mangez, combien d'autres personnes y avait-il Every day, Question. all the base Réponse. people and 17 pre-people people would go to the uh, communal kitchen for meals. At answer 33 Question. of your OCIJ interview, you said, quote, the rations the rations were gruel and sometimes a little rice but it did not satisfy our hunger. There was a large bowl of soup that we shared, eating 10 persons per table, Can you tell us what effect these rations had on the health of the workers at the cooperatives? Quelle était l'incidence de ces rations alimentaires sur la santé des travailleurs des coopératives? again, not an expert. He can say something about what happened to him. Well, he ce n'est pas have enough soup, un expert, il peut dire ce on, uh, qui lui est arrivé, mais il ne peut pas parler des effets uh, de cette situation man. sur la santé des autres membres de la coopérative. Je the suis prêt à reformuler. Mr. Sauhin, can you tell us what effect these rations had on your own health and the health of anyone that you had direct contact with? De quelle façon votre santé a-t-elle été affectée par ces rations alimentaires Qu'en est-il de la santé des gens avec qui vous étiez en contact Réponse. We did not receive enough food nous ne and meals pas assez à and then our health become, became weak. Nous nous Some get swollen body and Certains they uh, go to the hospital and some le corps uh, disappear. Enflé. I don't know what happened to them. Certains ont disparu, Sometimes a nurse came to distribute um, medicine at the unit and also in a group. The, the medicine was produced locally uh, médecins, in the area. Did people uh, ever Question. complain to the cooperative chief or to any other leader when they felt there was not enough food? Chefs, qu avait pas assez à Absolutely not. Réponse. No one pas there complained anything. We just complained by ourselves among uh, uh, one or two people. And if it is overheard by the Khmerus, uh, the person uh, will be uh, disappeared. Par petit groupe de deux. Et si cette conversation était surprise, In answer 42 of your OCIJ question. interview, you said, quote, even people who had conflicts about not getting enough food or who had broken a spoon or a plow were considered to be enemies, end quote. Do you know why these people who had conflicts about not having enough food were considered to be enemies? In practice, the unit chief, uh, they keep saying like that, and uh, they keep threatening people in uh, these terms. Mr. President, with the Chamber's leave, Question. I would now si like to show the release, witness document E3-4127. E3 the ERN in Khmer is 0027-0806. In English, it's 0036-2229. And in French, en it's 0063-2505. And this is a document from Tramcock District dated 17 January 1978. And it's about someone who was arrested for complaining about rice rations.
The President uh, Council, le Président, you may proceed. Je vous en prie, Maître, allez-y. Monsieur le Président, Mr. là encore, uh, again, uh, je voudrais que uh, Monsieur le Co-Procureur uh, like uh, nous indique quel est le lien entre ce document et ce témoin. J'ai bien compris qu'il veut parler d'un élément similaire, mais uh, comme il a été fait sur le document précédemment, uh, il n'y avait pas besoin de montrer le document uh, au témoin pour poser la question. Donc s'il a besoin de poser une question sur une personne en particulier, il devrait d'abord demander au témoin si il connaît cette personne particulière et ensuite éventuellement lui fournir le document, mais il n'a pas besoin d'être euh, en connaissance hein, et en, en possession de documents pour répondre aux questions, si c'est des questions similaires à celles qui ont été posées précédemment. Euh, J'objecte sur euh, ce, ce, ce procédé parce que c'est un procédé qui devient un petit peu récurrent, sans qu'il y ait un lien entre un témoin et un document, on donne systématiquement lecture du contenu du document au témoin, et je pense que ce n'est pas euh, utile et ce n'est pas un bon procédé dans le cadre de la manifestation de la vérité. A good way of proceeding uh, with regard to the ascertainment of the truth. Uh, Your Honor, in my submission, there's certainly been adequate foundation laid for the use of this document. Uh, the witness has just said that people overheard complaining about food would disappear. Uh, this is a document from his area. It's from Tramcock. Uh, the document contains uh, a degree of detail in addition to the name of a person. These are details that we submit could very reasonably be expected to jog the memory of the witness. Of course, at the distance of time that we're dealing with, uh, merely, merely reciting a name uh, may not be as helpful to a witness who, who could potentially help the chamber to contextualize the document. Mr. President, if you allow me to react, um, if you have a close look at the, the Krang Tachan documents, as, as I call them uh, commonly, uh, if they are authentic, you will be able to read that nobody was actually arrested only because he was complaining about food. Sometimes it was mentioned that somebody was complaining about food, but there is always a larger context. There is always uh, accusations of uh, working closely with Vietnamese uh, or other uh, issues like uh, uh, structurally stealing uh, from the community. So just taking out this one passage uh, from a document that this witness doesn't even know Un passage uh, d'un document inconnu du témoin n'a aucun sens. Uh, Ai-je dit, ai je fais une erreur Le président, 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 le Avez-vous quelque chose à dire Oui, Monsieur le Président. Yes, Mr. President, um, compte tenu de la réponse de uh, Monsieur le Procureur, j'ai uh, d'autant plus uh, des raisons d'objecter puisqu'il est en train de nous expliquer qu'il uh, n'avait pas l'intention de donner le nom de la personne uh, qui... Uh, sur laquelle il veut euh, faire lire le document euh, euh, au témoin et qu'il entendait rafraîchir la mémoire. Mais on ne peut pas rafraîchir la mémoire euh, d'un témoin si au départ on ne sait pas s'il avait l'intention de parler de la personne en question. Donc là, ce n'est plus rafraîchir la mémoire, c'est de nourrir d'éléments d'information qu'il n'avait pas auparavant. Je parle peut-être un peu vite, je vois que Madame euh, le juge Fens pisse les yeux, donc je vais peut-être répéter plus lentement pour la traduction. Je répète ce que j'indique, à savoir que dans un premier temps, et ça a toujours été la pratique devant la Chambre, si l'on veut rafraîchir la mémoire d'un témoin, il faut que l'on sache sur un premier point s'il avait l'intention de parler ou s'il connaissait la personne sur les, de, 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 dont on veut euh, évoquer les événements. Là, en l'occurrence, le témoin a simplement parlé de façon générale de personnes qui auraient été arrêtées. On n'a pas la preuve que monsieur euh, le témoin connaît le, la personne qui est euh, objet du document que monsieur le procureur veut présenter. Pour moi, il n'y a pas possibilité d'utiliser ce document pour rafraîchir la mémoire du témoin si on ne sait pas si la personne dont euh, le document euh, fait état euh, est une personne que le témoin connaissait. Donc, euh, au préalable, il y a au moins euh, une étape qui, euh, a été, euh, qui a été écartée et qui ne convient pas d'écarter dans le cadre euh, des procédures devant cette chambre. Um, 
The president, uh, co-prosecutor, do you do you have anything to respond to this um, uh, remark? Well, certainly, I, I am intending to provide the name of the person. The name of the person is in the document. Uh, but there are also additional details about the incident um, that will pre present a fuller picture um, that I think will be more useful uh, in allowing the witness to say accurately whether he remembers this or not. This is a question more about an incident than it is about a particular person. It's a question that more about an incident than about a particular person. The President, um, Chet Lewain, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, um, the Chamber wishes to say that when a document is relevant uh, to examine a witness on a topic he is familiar with, the document may be used. Uh, this practice also has another benefit, is that when an international counsel or the international co-prosecutor puts questions, there might be a problems uh, with uh, the, the pronunciation of uh, Khmer names. So the fact of reading out uh, the language in the document in the original language uh, of the witness may uh, help in avoiding this kind of problem. Also, the chamber is sometimes concerned by the fact that in certain questions, the reality of a situation might be poorly represented. So by providing the original document to the witness, we avoid this kind of, uh, or this kind of uh, this risk 
of confusion. Uh, so the chamber therefore authorizes uh, the use of uh, the document in question. And could I ask that the document be broadcast as well, please? Je demande que le document soit également affiché. The President, uh, your request is granted. Le Président, vous y êtes autorisé. Mr. Salhian, as you can see, this document is addressed to Comrade Brother Committee of the Education Office in District 105. It's dated 17 January 1978, and it's signed by a person named Nun. My first question is, do you remember a Khmer Rouge leader or cadre named Nun in Tramkak? I'm not clear on this name. I don't know this name. Okay. Uh, I'd now like to read a little bit of the document to you. It says, we have arrested a new resident named Soksai in Tramkak village, Tramkak sub-district. This person argued that on 14 January, he was instructed to work like an animal and that the store was full of rice, while the ration, while the food ration was very little, end quote. It then goes on to talk about him complaining about planting cassavas in this month and saying, why do we need to follow those enemies who know nothing about it? And then it continues, quote, therefore, the district committee decided to instruct us to arrest and send him to your place, end quote. And what I want to ask you is, are you familiar with this incident when this person named Soksai was arrested for these complaints? Quelle est votre réaction? Answer, I um, refrain to answer this question because I don't know uh, Soksai and who he was. I don't know him. Soksai. Okay, thank you. L'accusation. Bien, merci. Can you tell us, when cooperatives were established in Tramcock District, were people free to farm and grow what they wanted? For example, could you have grown your own vegetables or fruit to eat when you were hungry? Answer. People could grow vegetables, but the people from the economic légumes, section would collect uh, the crops. People were not allowed to collect them for food. In answer 36 of your OCIJ statement, Question. you said that many people were sick with things like fever and diarrhea. Was there adequate medical care for these people? Les soins médicaux prodigués à ces malades étaient-ils euh, adéquats Answer, no. Non. Can you tell us what Question. happened to people who had fevers and diarrhea in your experience? D'après votre expérience, qu'arrivait-il aux gens qui souffraient de fièvre et de diarrhée Est-ce est que ce témoin est à présent un médecin adequate, adequate Quand on know? parle de soins médicaux adéquats, comment ce témoin pourrait-il le savoir
The president's uh, the objection by the different council uh, does not sustain. Does not sustain. Witness, uh, please uh, answer rejeter, to the last question put by the co-prosecutor if you still remember si the question. Anyone who get diarrhea, there was no medicine for them at the group or at the unit. Dans le groupe, um, unité, il n'y avait pas de médicaments pour ceux qui avaient la diarrhée. Bed pellet like medicine was uh, given to those people who fall sick, but uh, the, the medicine was was not efficient for uh, treatment. I didn't see any uh, modern medicine for any treatment. Aucun médicament moderne n'était utilisé. I'd now like to ask you. Question. Uh, a few questions about the topic of internal enemies. In your interview at Answer 42, you were asked this question, quote, during meetings, did they talk about sweeping clean internal enemies, unquote. Your answer was, quote, they did. Even people who had conflicts about not getting enough food or who had broken a spoon or a plow were considered to be enemies. I never saw them arrest anyone during meetings, I asked you earlier about people who had conflicts about not getting enough food. Can you tell us why people who had broken a plow or spoon were considered to be internal enemies? À chacune des réunions auxquelles nous assistions, unit chief le chef d'unité répète la même chose à tous ceux qui étaient présents. And can you tell us what he told you as best you can remember? Et pourriez-vous nous dire ce qu'il vous a dit dans la mesure où vous en souvenez? I can recall uh, that. If a plow or spoon uh, was broken, then the person si who did it would be considered as an internal enemy within the cooperative. And that's the, the language that was used by the unit chief. You've mentioned people who complained about food or who broke plows being considered internal enemies. Do you remember any other groups being identified as internal enemies? enemies at these meetings. D'ennemis de l'intérieur. Vous souvenez-vous si des groupes de personnes ont ou ont été qualifiés d'ennemis de l'intérieur lors de ces réunions également? Uh, from what I recall, during the meetings, they reiterated, reiterated the points that I just said. It means if you broke a spoon or a plow, or if you uh, si were to steal something, charrue, you will be considered si an internal enemy. Un ennemi, ennemi You've mentioned the unit chief Question. speaking at the meetings. Uh, do you recall anyone else speaking at the meetings? Réponse. We did not dare to raise any issues or to, to protest. Personne n'osait protester. And it was the unit chief who question. spoke during the meeting. Qui parlait pendant toute la réunion. You also said that you never saw anyone arrested in these meetings at which internal enemies were discussed. Do you know of any situation of a person being arrested uh, for having a conflict about food or for having broken a spoon or a plow? Au cours de laquelle une personne qui aurait cassé une cuillère ou une charrue ou aurait protesté au sujet de la nourriture no, a été not. arrêtée. Réponse. Non, je n'ai pas connaissance d'une telle situation. Of course, they would have uh, other reasons for Bien the arrest of uh, other people, but personally, I did not witness uh, that arrest.
I'd now like to ask you a few questions about the status of Buddhism and Buddhist practice during the period of 1975 to 1979. And could you start by telling the court, as best you remember, what happened to Buddhist pagodas and Buddhist statues in your area during the period from 1975 to 1979? What I saw in the gutter through the Bodhi statues, I didn't see them in the pagoda anymore as they were all taken away. So they were the, the books or the Buddhist books or uh, disciplines. And some of the Buddhist books were uh, used uh, for to wrap the tobacco as a smoke. Certains livres étaient utilisés, on en prenait les feuilles pour faire des feuilles In de tabac. answer 45 of your OCIJ de statement, you Question. said that pagodas Dans were used as hospitals votre and workshops. Can you tell us about any specific examples you remember of particular pagodas being used as hospitals or workshops? d'une pagode qui aurait été utilisée en tant que hôpital ou atelier. There was uh, one Ayodham pagoda in uh, Tramkok commune. It was turned into a workshop. And here I refer specifically to the, uh, to the monks' uh, dining hall in là, that pagoda. And also in Tmokai uh, pagodas, it was turned into a place where they worked. Do you know what happened to Buddhist monks in your area during that period? Qu'il est advenu des moines bouddhistes dans votre région pendant cette période? Buddhist monks. Réponse. In my area, to my uh, knowledge, I did not know what actually happened to them, but uh, I knew that they were defrocked. All of them were defrocked. And how did you know that? I saw monks being walked uh, uh, to be defrocked. They walked them along the road towards the north, uh, northern direction. Allant vers le nord sur la route pour être défroqué. Were you familiar with a pagoda Question. called Wat Angroka or Wat Champa? And if so, can you tell us what they were used for in that period? Oui, nous dire à quoi servaient ces pagodes entre 75 et 79. I know uh, Angroka pagoda. Réponse. Je connais I, la pagoda Angroka. I also know uh, Champa pagoda, Je but I did not know uh, what they were used for bah, during the regime. À quoi elles servaient? Do you remember Question. ever being told anything about whether you were allowed to practice Buddhism during that period? And if so, what were you told? During the uh, regime, they did not uh, say anything at all about uh, the, the religion because Pendant all régime, kinds of religions were prohibited and we were not allowed to practice any religion and we were told also not to believe in any superstition. And who was it who told you not to believe in any superstition? Question, qui vous a dit cela, que vous n'aviez pas le droit de croire en une quelconque superstition? At each meeting, réponse. the uh, group chief or the unit chief uh, repeated chef de the same uh, uh, message that we should not believe in uh, superstition and that we should not uh, pray through the, uh, the statue, the spirit statues. statues. 
I now have a few questions for you about weddings during the period of 1975 to 1979. And at answer 43 of your OCIJ statement, you mention weddings of 10 to 20, 20 couples at a time, and you say, quote, they had them make resolutions, end quote. Can you tell us what a resolution was in your understanding and how and why they were made? Based on the information I received when I asked those people who made uh, resolutions, it means that uh, those people were asked whether they would accept uh, uh, his or her partner to be uh, for life, and if they, they said yes, suivante. it means they, they made the uh, resolution. And as for the parents or the relatives of uh, those uh, couples, they were not allowed to, to attend uh, such a ceremony. On ne leur permettait pas d'assister à la cérémonie. You just said these people were asked whether they would accept someone as a partner. Who was it that was asking them whether they would accept someone as a partner? I did not know whether any of them uh, refused. But I knew about them uh, making uh, resolutions refusé, because at that time the, uh, the, the people who attended the ceremony, uh, including the commune chief, the village chief, and the unit chief. Chef le chef de et le chef de you also said that uh, parents and other relatives weren't permitted to attend these ceremonies. Um, did anyone ever explain to you why parents and other relatives weren't permitted to attend? I didn't know the details nor uh, understand why they did that. Je ne connaissais pas les détails et je ne comprenais pas non plus pourquoi ils agissaient ainsi. Can you tell us now whether you recall a unit referred to as a widow's unit in your cooperative? À présent, nous dire pourquoi il y avait une unité qui était nommée l'unité des veuves. Yes. Réponse. Can you tell us what that unit was? Question. Pourriez-vous nous dire en quoi consistait cette unité? A, a widow a unit, Réponse. based on what I saw in my village, it referred to a group of village, women whose husband were uh, taken away or whose husband uh, died, so that uh, the, the woman without the husbands were placed Donc, into this uh, widow's group. As for uh, women with younger children, they would be put in another uh, group. So regardless of their status, these uh, widow groups would engage in the, the same kind of work that we engage in the rice field. President, the time is now appropriate for a short break. We will take a break now and return at uh, half past 10. And court officer, please assist the witness during uh, the break. And have him return to the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess. Suspension of the audience.